The United States faces three related crises. We've heard a lot about the economic crisis and 14 million unemployed. We'll be hearing more about that tonight. There are two related crises, though, too, that I want to also focus on a bit. The energy security crisis and our in increasing vulnerability to international incident and human and natural disasters on our own shore, and a climate crisis that threatens the very planet that we all live on. The United States is historically a country that does not back down from crises. We have an entrepreneurial spirit. We are innovation leaders. And we've made innovative and balanced use of our valuable land and water resources. We have started in this vein to move toward a clean energy economy, which would really have the impact of addressing all three of these crises. The economic crisis by creating jobs and businesses and making America more competitive. The security crisis by diversifying our energy supply so we're not dependent on increasingly volatile and risky fossil fuels. And the climate crisis by moving us to an energy system that's more efficient and less carbon intensive. I'll focus mainly in my oral remarks on economic crisis, as that's the focus of the hearing and of this week in Washington. Contrary to a lot of critics, especially this week in the media, clean energy is a bright spot in our otherwise bleak economic picture. The Brookings Institute came out with a report very recently showing that the green economy overall, including transportation, waste management, and other industries, has already created 2.7 million jobs in the last few years. Jobs in certain clean energy sectors, including renewable energy and efficiency, have grown from two to four times the rate of the economy as a whole, even during the recession. These jobs, importantly, are high quality. They, they span industries and occupations, and they span geographic locations. They, on average, have 13 percent higher wages than average. 26 percent of the jobs are in manufacturing, a critical sector. More than 50 percent of the people in these sectors do not have a four-year college degree. And those folks are important. They're 70 percent of our workforce. So we can't forget about them. Clean energy investments are increasingly cost effective and stable because the major cost of the investment is infrastructure. And after that cost, the resource itself is free. You heard the price of solar's coming down, wind as well. And a great example there about the reliability on cost is that the University of Minnesota recently installed wind turbines and have found as a result that they can cost out their energy for the next 15 years reliably. They, they won't face the up and down costs that they would if they had not gone to that technology. And it's good for competitiveness. You heard that we have a 1.9 billion net trade balance in solar, including net exports to China. Seeing these benefits, a number of states have prioritized clean energy as part of their economic development plans with strong results. For instance, Texas, where former Governor George Bush signed a renewable energy standard into law in 1999, now leads the nation in, wind, in installed wind generation and has created 9,000 jobs in that sector, 35 domestic manufacturing facilities, and gets $150 million a year in property taxes and lease payments to the state. Colorado is a bright spot in this economy as well. Colorado has increased its renewable energy standard three times because it continues to meet it and exceed it. And between 1998 and 2007, clean energy jobs in Colorado grew 18 percent compared to 8.2 percent growth rate for all jobs in that state. The American Solar Energy Association has found that the sector and renewable energies and efficiency in Colorado generates 70 percent more jobs than the oil and gas sector in that state. And because of its progressive clean energy policies and its strong policies on demand in particular, Colorado has attracted foreign investment, inc including from the Danish wind turbine company Vestas, which, is in, which has invested about a billion dollars in building factories in Colorado, employing more than 1,600 people. So this is bringing in outside investment, and it's also creating a new set of industries that's growing jobs and growing domestic production. These stories have in common that they happened in states that provided policy certainty and financing certainty. So developers knew there was demand for their products. Manufacturers knew that if they had something on the factory floor, they could sell it in two years, and the market wouldn't fall away from underneath them. But this demand cannot happen at the state level alone. It's not enough to spur the industry to the level we need to get. Unless we provide similar certainty at the United States level, we'll fall behind other countries in the global economy, in particular China, which has now surpassed the United States as a, in the Ernst & Young Renewable Energy Investment Attractiveness Index and brought in huge numbers of private investments in renewables. In conclusion, the U.S. frankly risks squabbling while Rome burns on this issue. The future of energy in the economy lies in cleaner energy solutions. We must embrace that future now or we risk becoming the world's great importers of technology and innovation rather than its leaders. Thank you.